Hello there, Mr. Sutton here, bringing you the BC Calculus 8.1 Part 1 Homework Solutions on Parametric Functions. On this problem, I've got the parametric functions for x and y, and I want to figure out dy over dx. So for that, I need y prime of t over x prime of t. So for y prime of t, I've got, let's see here, this is just going to be 2e to the t. It's its own derivative. And for x prime of t, I just use a little power rule, so 2t and the invisible 0 there. I can reduce this by 2 to get just e to the t over t, but there's not much more I can do, so that's going to be answer choice A. For this problem, in the xy plane, the graph of the parametric equations given here, they're telling us is a line segment, and they want the slope of it. Now, before you freak out and think, hey, I have to turn this into the equation of a line and find the slope, well, a slope of a line is going to be constant everywhere. So you just need to find dy over dx for this thing, even if you leave them in this form, and then that slope is going to represent the whole line. So dy over dx for a parametric function, we remember that is y prime of t over x prime of t. In this case, y prime of t, that's just the derivative of 3t, which is just 3. And then x prime of t, that's the derivative of this line here, that's going to be just 5. Uh, so 3 fifths then is going to be our slope, choice A. For this problem, we're given this curve represented by these parametric equations, and we want the slope of the tangent line to the curve when x equals 3. So you have to be careful here because they didn't give you the t value yet. Um, so before you can even plug anything into the derivative function for a parametric function, you need to figure out the t value when x equals 3. So that's going to deal with this first equation, this x equals e to the t equation. So x in general equals e to the t, and we want that to have a value of 3. Solving for t in this situation, we just take the ln of both sides, so we have t equals ln of 3. So now we can plug ln of 3 in and figure out what the slope is going to be. So for the slope dy over dx, we're using y prime of t over uh, x prime of t. So plugging in ln of 3, that means we're going to have y prime of ln of 3 over x prime of ln of 3. And to do that, I am just going to use the calculator. To make this a little bit less unwieldy, I'm entering my x and my y as y1 and y2 on the calculator. And then quitting out of there, I need to do a fraction where I'm taking their derivatives and plugging 3 in. Uh, so let me do alpha y equals for Francy fraction here. And in the numerator, I'm going to take the derivative of this y1 with respect to, to t at, at ln of 3. So I'm going to do math. 8, that's the end derivative function, and I'll use an x in here. And then I've got, let's see here, this is going to be, I entered this in y2, so let me do alpha trace y2, there we go. And I want to use ln of 3 for that value. Let me come downstairs now and do basically the same thing but with y1. Uh, so math 8, derivative, x, alpha trace, y1 this time, because that's where I stored x. And then still taking the, uh, the derivative at an input value of ln of 3. All right, let's press enter and hope for the best. So that comes out to about negative 0.011. And that does match answer choice D. On this problem, I'm given a parametric set of equations. And I want their derivative at time 1. So in general, dy over dx for parametrics, that's y prime over x prime of t y prime of t in this situation, that's the derivative of this square root function. So I need a, a little bit of a chain rule here. I'm going to have 1 half times 3t plus 1 to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the stuff inside here, so times 3. And I'll clean this up in a minute. Now we need x prime of t, derivative of this equation. So that's using our power rule, 3t squared minus 1. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and plug in 1 for t. Now, when I do this, I'm going to clean things up and put them in radical and fraction form. So in the numerator, if you look closely, all that's actually left is 3. And in the denominator, what do we have? Well, this 2 from the 1 half is actually coming downstairs. And this 3t plus 1 to the negative 1 half, that's the square root of this stuff in the denominator. So I'll have the square root of 3 times 1 plus 1 down there. And then finally, it's this 3t squared minus 1 was there in the first place. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to put this in a parentheses. This is 3 times 1 squared minus 1. 
All right, cleaning this up a little bit more to get an answer choice. The 3 can stay, the 2 can stay for now. We have the square root of 3 plus 1, square root of 4, which is 2. And then over here, this is just going to be 3 minus 1, which is also 2. So then we have 3 over 8, giving us answer choice B. On this problem, I'm given this parametric set of equations, and I want the second derivative. Let me start by finding the first derivative, dy over dx, with uh, respect to t. So for that, I need y prime of t over x prime of t. y prime of t, that's going to be just 3t squared. For x prime of t, I've got just 2t. And I'm going to reduce that to 3 halves t just to make it a little easier to do the next step, which is going to be to take another derivative of this. So now I need the derivative of this with respect to t. However, in order to get d squared y over dx squared, I need to divide this derivative by dx over dt to get rid of this dt and to get this to be a dx squared. So basically dividing the derivative of this thing by x prime. Derivative of this thing, that's just going to be 3 halves, a constant. Uh, and then we have 2t that we're dividing by. Simplifying that a little bit, I have a 3 in the numerator, I have a, a 4t in the denominator, and is that going to give me an answer choice? It looks like answer choice A. For this problem, I've got some curve defined by these parametric equations here. We want to know the equation of the line tangent to the graph of C at the point negative 3, 8. Okay, well, we know we have to go through this point, um, so that's at least something. So probably this x equals 2 is no good because it doesn't go through the x value negative 3. This is a vertical line that doesn't go through here. Um, everything else at least goes through this point. So moving ahead then, since we already have the point, let's find the slope. For slope, I need y prime of t over x prime of t. Um, and let me also get, uh, I also need the t value actually now that I think about it because they never told me what time we were going through this point. So to figure out the time at which we're going through this point, we need to either set 8 equal to this y equation here and solve for t, or you can set negative 3 equal to the x equation up here and solve for t. Personally, I'm going to go with t cubed equals 8 because that's an easier equation to solve. I don't have to do any factoring. And I'm guaranteed that I'm only going to get one answer since I'm just cube rooting rather than some kind of weird square rooting. So if t cubed equals 8, that means that we hit this point at time 2. Okay, let me go ahead now and take the uh, derivative with respect to t. So dy over dx is really going to be y prime of t over x prime of t. y prime of t is going to be 3t squared. x prime of t, that's going to be 2t minus 4. And now I have to plug, let's see here, 2 into all of that. So plugging 2 in, we've got 3 times 2 squared over 2 times 2 minus 4. In the numerator, that's going to be 12. In the denominator, that's going to be 0. So this slope does not exist, is undefined. What that means, since it's something that's not 0 over something that is 0, we basically have a vertical tangent line here. And this is a vertical tangent line going through the point negative 3, 8. Given that situation, that means we're going to have to graph or write the equation as an x equals constant kind of deal. Uh, x is just going to equal whatever x value we're going through. So x equals negative 3 then, answer choice A, is going to be our answer. For this problem, the components of velocity for a particle are given by the x prime and y prime parametric components here. And they're saying that this k that's involved is a positive constant. Then they're saying the line y equals 4x plus 3 is parallel to the tangent line for the path of the particle when time is 2. Based off all this, we want the value of k. Okay, so they've given us everything we need, basically, but we need to set up some kind of an equation. So we know that the slope at the time that we care about, at time 2, the slope is parallel to this line, which is 4x plus 3. So our slope is essentially 4. And then we've got these different components of the velocity in a parametric form. Um, so we're basically going to set this up as a dy over dx using our parametric uh, derivative formula. And we're going to set that equal to this slope of 4. That's our game plan on this. So we can say, in general, a y prime of t over x prime of t is the same as dy over dx. So in this case, that's ke to the kt 
over 1 over t plus 1. And there's really no harm in cleaning this up a little bit, multiplying by the reciprocal. So we've got ke to the kt times t plus 1. Now this is supposed to have a value of 4. But it only has a value of 4 at a specific time, at time 2. So if I plug 2 in for all the t's, so this is ke to the k times 2 times 2 plus 1, uh, then that should equal the slope 4 from that line that's parallel to our tangent line. Let's clean this up a little bit more now. So I've got, let's see here, this is going to be ke to the 2k, all that times 3, and that should equal 4. Now this is not something you can really easily solve with normal algebra, um, so I'm going to go ahead and use the grapher on this. In order to do this on the grapher, I'm going to put the left half of my equation, which I'm entering as 3x e to the 2x, because that's how my graphing calculator likes its variables. That's in the y1. In the y2, I've put 4, the thing I want this to equal, and I'm just going to graph these and see where they intersect. So I want to get a good window for this. For my window, I notice that all the answer choices are clustered between 0 and positive 1. So I'm going to go from 0 to 1 for my window. Let me then do a zoom 0, zoom fit, and see if these even cross at all in this window. So there's the left side of the equation being graphed, and now the right side, that horizontal line through 4. And they definitely do cross here. So let me do second trace, option 5, intersect, and then enter, enter, enter. That gives us about 0.495. And that's going to be answer choice C. For this problem, we have a parametric set of equations. And on the interval from negative 2 to 3, we want to find the leftmost point that this is going to give us. So let's start by getting the derivative of x, because that controls the left right. We want to find critical values for this. So x prime of t. That's going to be using our power rule 2t plus 2. We want to figure out where this has a value of 0. That's going to happen at, let's see, subtract 2, divide by 2, so negative 1. And just doing a little bit of sign analysis uh, in our heads here, if I plug in something between negative 2 and negative 1, that's going to make this, this first term a little bit more negative than the second term is positive. So this is going to come out negative. Uh, so we can say that x prime of t is less than 0, negative, between negative 2 and negative 1. And if I plug in something bigger than 1, like 0, well, this is going to come out positive, And there's no other critical values. Um, so we can say that uh, x prime of t is going to be greater than 0 between, let's see, negative 1 and positive 3. So if x is decreasing, in other words, we're going left until we get to negative 1, and then we're going right after that, and there's no other changes in direction, that means the furthest left we're ever going to get is going to be at this negative 1 when we stop going left. So at time 1, we reach our leftmost point, and the leftmost point is just going to be whatever x of negative 1 comma y of negative 1 is. x of negative 1, plugging that in here, that's going to be 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. y of negative 1, plugging that in here, that's going to be 1 plus 2, which is 3, plus another 3 is 6. So there we have it.